So in this class, we'll be looking at the solution to the 2023 physics practical exam graph question. All right, so you have this as your exam graph question. Let's look at the solution here. Solution here, A says, complete the table and plot the graph of cos theta against x, right? So you have this cos theta, you have x, okay? B says, estimate the slope of the graph. And C says, what parameter does the slope of this graph represent? Now, by the way, I skipped something here. In this question here, the original question said that this table was constructed while a student was trying to look for the refractive index of a glass prism, all right? So that was like the question under this, which I did not add here. So please take note that the question under this was that um, this table was got from a student who was trying to find the refractive index of a glass prism. Now, having said that, let's get to the solving part. The first task there is to fill up the column for cos theta, all right? So the idea here is now simple. You have theta as being 70, 60, 40, 30, and 20. You have to find cos theta. Please make sure that your, your um, calculator is in degrees. All right. If it's in degrees now, again, observe that this value, these other values here were given in like two decimal places. So we'll punch cos 70, cos 60, cos 40, cos 30, and cos 20 all in two decimal places. All right. If you punch cos 70, you have about 0 0.34 as your answer in two decimal places. If you punch cos 60, you have about 0 0.50 in two decimal places as your answer. If you punch cos 40, you have about 0 0.70, 77 please, in two decimal places. If you punch cos 30, you have about 0 0.87 as your answer. Now finally, if you punch cos 20, you have about 0 0.94 as your answer. So with this, we filled up the table for cos theta. Our next task is to come here and fill up the column for x. Now, they said x is equal to the value of nz all over ROZ. Let's take the first, um, the first row. nz here is 1.20. ROZ is 4.80. So, for the first column here, we have nz as being 1.20 all over ROZ is about 4.80. So, that's simply for the first row, 1.20 divided by 4.80. And again, in two decimal places, my answer would be 0 0.25. So I have here 0 0.25. The second column, take these two here. That becomes 1.60. It's about 1.60 divided by 4.90. All right, if I punch this, my answer will give me about 0 0.33 as an answer. Okay. The next one there would now be the third. Um, take the third row. For my third row, I have about 2.10 divided by 5.10. So I have 2.10 divided by 5.10. So 2.10 over 5.10, that gives you about 0 0.4541 as your answer approximately. So I have 0 0.41 approximately as my answer. The next question here becomes the next rule. That's 2.80 divided by 5.40. So I have 2.80 divided by 5.40. And if I do this, this math here, this will give you about 0 0.52 for an answer. So I have this as 0 0.52. All right, one last rule. Let's take one final rule there. The last rule here, you have 2.90 divided by 5.50. So I have 2.90 divided by 5.50. And if I punch this, you have the answers about 0 0.0.3. 0 .3. Uh, you have 0 0.53. 0 0.53 is your answer. All right, so with this now, we've um, answered the first part here. The first part said you should complete the table. Uh, we've done this first part here. Next one, so we should plot a graph of cos theta against x, right? Cos theta against x. So let's head over to our graph sheet and get this done. All right, so basically this is my graph sheet here. So we have this. Um, for I've already plotted this, of course, you can see this. Um, your task for every graph is to get out your title and your scale, all 
all right so what's my title what's my scale for this graph here my title my title here will be the graph of cos theta against against what there x observe that cos theta does not have any si unit so i did not add it there x also does not have any si unit so i also did not add it there cos theta will be on the vertical axis y x will be on the horizontal axis all right so with this i've gotten the title of my graph what about the scale what is the scale of my own graph now note that when it comes to picking scale pick the scale that will be suitable for your own graph right the scale will differ depending on the size and the kind of graph you're using all right but for this how do you scale this so let's look at the scale used for the scale used in mind what do you, how do i call this now don't forget that if you're picking scale let's start with the cos theta axis that's the vertical axis here from my origin this point to my first major line this one here i have about 0 0.1 as my value there so what i will say is this i will say let's one unit all right by one unit i mean from the very origin that's this part here from the origin to my first major line is called one unit so let's one unit represent if i look at this it's about 0 0.1 so i'll say let's one unit represent re pre zent 0.1 now since there's no si unit i'll just proceed that's on the cos theta axis all right let's go to the um, horizontal axis with the same concept here from this to this point here is still 0 0.1 again it does not mean that yours would always be the same thing 0 0.1 0 0.1 yours could differ again depending on the kind of graph sheet you're using all right so i also say and and let's one unit represent so re present still 0 0.1 since the x-axis that's the horizontal axis here has no si units i'll just write 0 0.1 and i will not add any units so on the x axis all right so this is how you get your scale again your scale could differ from mine depending on the size and the type of your graph sheets all right all right so with, with the title and the scale used gotten let's um, look at something else so we act to plot the graph all right so you just pick up your points and then plot your graph so this is like my own graph right so i am done plotting my own graph all right i'll go to the question back all right so a says complete the table and plot the graph of cos theta against x so cos theta will be on your vertical axis and x on your horizontal axis so this one is check i'm done with this let's come to the b part b part says estimate the slope of the graph let's get the slope of the graph <laughs> now for this slope don't forget that slope slope is equal to change in the parameter on your vertical axis which in this case is this one here cos theta so change in cos theta all over change in the parameter on the horizontal axis here which is about x so the parameter here is about x so this would literally be like your formula all right change in cos theta all over change in x so um, let me clean this a bit so slope uh, excuse me so slope is equal to change in cosine of theta all over change in x so i have this and if i should put this all right it becomes cos theta 2 right minus cos theta 1 just like when you do y2 minus y1 the same concept all divided by here i'll now have x2 minus x1 all right so now when it comes to picking up the points it's easier for you for this this one here i use my line of best fit okay so when you're joining this use your line of best fit and we said when it comes to picking value you look for that point just like you have this let's say the line goes this way like this let's say it goes this way like this um somewhere like this right where you have this kind of points something like here here where you have the vertical line like this the horizontal line like this and then the line going this way in between them 
that's why you pick as your point right but for mine i don't i don't really have this here so i'll just have to improvise now improvising means i'll just take since this one here if i use my line of best fit observe that some of the points lie outside the line but then if i look at this carefully you see that this particular point is inside the line so i'll just take this as one point instead all right i'm improvising i've already told you what to do so y2 becomes from here you trace this one here trace this downward here trace that point downwards okay also trace this here to your left you have this okay for this other point too i'll just come here also improvise here I've told you how to pick your points. So I'll just come here, choose this point here, and take it down as one point, and then this. All right, so with this, you can now draw this line like this here, and then this one here. Right. So what you have here is called your cos theta 2. This is cos theta 2 value. What you have here is cos theta 1 value. What you have here is your x2. This point here is your x2 value. What you have here is your x1 value, all right? So let's see, what's cos theta 2? Cos theta 2 is about 0. Point, if you check this point here, that's about 0. 0.94. So 0. 0.94 um, minus cos theta 1, which is this point here, is about 0. All right, so for cos theta 1, you'd have this point here. That's where this line cuts the axis here. This value is about 0. 0.30. That's where it cuts there okay um next up let's look at the x2 x2 will be this point this point here where this line cuts the horizontal axis this point here for me that's about 0 0.53 minus x1 becomes this point here this is my x1 value and the x1 value here is about from what i have is about 0 0.22 so i have 0. 2, 2. All right, I'll just go straight to getting the final answer, right? So I'll just point 0 0.94 minus 0 0.30 all divided by 0 0.53 minus 0 0.22. If I punch this, my final answer is 2.06, approximately to two decimal places. All right, for this, there's no SI unit because both numerator and denominator does not have an SI unit. So I have that the slope. Of this graph is about 2.06 so back to this so for the B part for the B part we are asked to um, evaluate or estimate the slope of the graph that's about 2.06 no SI units C part says what parameter does the slope of the graph represent now remember that earlier I said that for this question here we said we got this particular table because a student was trying to calculate the refractive index of a prism or a glass prism so that means that the parameter so hence what parameter does the slope of this graph represent the answer is the refractive index the refractive index of a glass prism so that's the parameter that the slope represents. Now, what we know is that the refractive index of a glass prism is a constant whose value is about 1.5. So I should have, if this was correct, mine should be about 1.50 as your answer or something close to this. But you having 2.06 simply means that the student made an error while doing the calculation or while doing the experiment. That's why you have this kind of value that is very far from 1.50 all right so that means this student actually has or had an ex had an error why in the experiment so they could also ask in the deeper they say is the value correct or why do you think the value is not correct the answer would be simple i don't think that the value is correct simply because the refractive index of a glass prism is about 1.50 but the student had about 2.06 meaning that there's an error in the experiment all right Those, that's what you'd say all right, so before we go, um, let me inform you that we have a complete physics practical revision course on my website, all right, www.jedimoney.com forward slash courses, and you get um, a video lesson on physics practical, everything you need to know about the physics practical 
from the optics to refractive index and all of those, right? I've explained all of those as well as solved past questions for different years on the physics practical revision course, all right? So visit www.jonaimani.com forward slash courses and then you can order for the practical physics revision class, all right? Okay then, please, if you enjoyed this video, remember, always hit the like button. Please don't forget, smash the like button, all right? Leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed this video. All right. If it's your first time, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you get to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. All right. It helps us to grow. And finally, please share this video to your friends. All right. Your colleagues, share to your department WhatsApp group so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in the next class.